Welcome to the Unconventional Homestead. I'm Jenny, and tonight is Friday night. We're cooking for a crowd. We deliver to 19 people tomorrow, and we're having cabbage, ham, and noodle casserole, or bake, whatever you wanna call it. Super easy, because ham's already cooked. So um, the first thing we're gonna do is get the egg noodles. Now remember, I usually always make three batches of whatever. So if you're gonna follow this recipe, I'll put the single recipe or the inspiration recipe in the description. Go ahead and make three batches. You can freeze two for another time, or you can give one to a neighbor, one to a family member, freeze another, divide it up for lunches, however. But if you already have the pot and pan dirty, go for it. So let's, I have the water on the stove boiling. I've salted the water, and as we do, we're going to cook these to um, just a little less than done. Not al dente, because this isn't a soup where they'll be sitting in hot liquid. But three bags of noodles. The one thing I will say about this recipe is it calls for half a bag of noodles. And I've learned, because I've made a lot of bakes and casseroles and that type of thing, is people do like the noodles, but the other thing is, it is less expensive. Um, noodles are less than meat or vegetables usually. So, I am going to bring this back up to a boil and then I'll bring you back as we're throwing everything together. The noodles are done. Let's start putting stuff together. So I'm gonna bring you over to the stove. I have my really super big uh, soup pot because I noticed this is my 14 quart and just the three bags of noodles are halfway. And I have three bags of cabbage to put in, so it's not gonna fit. Um, <clears throat> But whenever I do noodles, I always add some butter because as they sit here, I don't want them sticking together. So I have added butter to that. If you're just making one batch, I don't know that you have to do that. Um, it calls for cream of mushroom soup. I don't do cream of mushroom um, because some people don't like mushrooms. So I usually substitute like cream of chicken or cream of celery, but I do make my own and I have a condensed soup that I make and put it in here. It's a powder. I had just enough left for this recipe. It takes three cans of condensed soup, which is one cup of this. Um, I put the directions right on here and sometime I will bring you along. Well, it'll be sooner than later because I'm out. Um, but I'm gonna bring you over here to the stove and we're gonna get going with the sauce and get this all put together. So in our pot, I have put a cup and a half of butter, so that's three sticks. I'm going to add in three cups of milk. As I've told you before, Anthony and I don't keep milk on hand, but this is three cups of dry non-fat. Now normally, because I'm doing the condensed soup, it just adds water but I thought, oh, this may add another layer of richness because it's cabbage and ham. Um, anyway, so if you were doing this, you would add three cups of milk with your three cans of condensed soup. The only um, seasoning are salt and pepper. For my three batches, it's half a tablespoon of each. Now I'm also going to put a cup of flour. I need to... Uh, Go get that, because I needed my cup measure. So I will be right back. Here is my cup of flour. I'm going to turn on the heat. This calls for three Onions, I'm gonna use a 
just a little over a fourth of a cup of dehydrated. And then I'm using a half pint of my caramelized onions. I was downstairs in our pantry tonight, pulling up some stuff for us to use. Let's see, I pulled up a can of, a quart of pears for Anthony, some grape juice. I pulled some soup, a ham and bean soup for some people that I'm delivering to tomorrow so they have um, something extra. Um, oh, and I pulled up a few jams to take and deliver tomorrow to people. Wouldn't be a video if I didn't stop something. But I do believe I'm gonna use the whisk because I certainly don't want that flour to clump up. But as, well, you can't see because I have it just out of the picture, is I have some cheese here that we're gonna add to this. So it's a kind of a cheese sauce. Oh my goodness, this smells wonderful. Those caramelized onions are delightful. Now, I may have to add some more water depending on how thick this gets because of that homemade condensed soup. We'll just see. We have to play it together a lot. And then I'm to add six cups of cheese and I have a few different bags here, so we're just gonna be mixing it in. But that's once this gets warm. It's not gonna be a lot of sauce. This isn't, a, but looking at the picture, it wasn't a heavy sauce. It wasn't like um, a baked spaghetti. It was much more light than that. But I think the flavor is all here. Those caramelized onions took it up a notch. You could just caramelize the onions um, before you, you know, put them in the pan. That butter is just melting. I could see this would um, have been good with some of the butter as swap it out for bacon grease um, because of the ham that would just add a whole nother flavor as well <clears throat> so what I like about this recipe is it's basically dump it in so we'll dump the for my three batches I have two large heads of cabbage that have been shredded by my dear friend Donna she helps me out a lot um, and then uh, some ham. I have a little bit more I need to cut up. Um, I already have the containers out here. I have labels to put on each of them so that I'm hoping I can get a few to put in the freezer so that we have some variety a few weeks from now if we need to give somebody an extra um, dinner. I wish you guys could smell this. It is wonderful. I think they're really gonna like this. But I'm gonna continue to stir and I'll bring you back before I add the cheese. So the condensed soup and flour mixture is fairly thick. It's like, um, it's like it's condensed soup. And uh, I want it a little bit thinner so that it'll cover everything. I'm gonna add in a pint of sour cream. I, in looking for recipes, one of the recipes had <clears throat> sour cream added and cottage cheese, kind of like a baked spaghetti. That is one of the favorites that I make. Um, so I don't think it'll be bad to add this. And it again, will just stretch the sauce, thin it a little bit. Yeah, 
Okay, now we're gonna add in the cheese. So like I said, I have a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but we definitely have six cups. And I get a few more bags out of my freezer and I don't have to manage those, which is always good. I don't want to add all of that just in case. It says you can add cheese to the top. I don't think I'll do that. I am going to add breadcrumbs to the top. Um, if you read the directions, it says bake it and then right at the end, add the breadcrumbs, but <clears throat> okay, so this is fairly thick. We are going to add the two heads of cabbage. So it is um, three bags it ended up being. But I'm just going to add two and we'll see. covering really well so I'm gonna add the third one after I add the noodles and see by adding that stick of butter they don't stick together at all which is beautiful and then I have a few bags of pan Well, one of the reasons I really like using wooden spoons as well is you can really get leverage to get big batches of stuff mixed up. Definitely worth trying, especially when you have cabbage on hand. I think this would be a really good one to use with leftover ham after Easter. Um, if your freezer is not stocked like mine and I'm trying to go through stuff like that. But here's the thing, I am going to add the last bag of cabbage. Um, I've always found cabbage to it just kind of melds into whatever 
you're making. So um, I make a unstuffed cabbage roll soup that's very popular. I made a cabbage and beef soup. I'm trying to think what casserole I've made. I don't know that I've made one that has cabbage in it. Um, but it is a nice, mild vegetable to get more vegetables into things. But I am glad, <laughs> I like kind of sometimes um, thinking out loud is good. I, I do have some more ham and I will cut that up and add it. But I'm glad that I added more noodles than it said because I think it's the right consistency. And I was a little concerned that wasn't going to be enough sauce but it is, I can tell that it's on almost everything. And I'll stir it up a little bit more. Let me go cut that ham and I'll bring you right back. So I've added the rest of the ham that I had and given it a good stir. I like to see, you know, noodles and cabbage and ham in every thing I stir up so that I know that it's well mixed in. It's very moist and I think once it's heated, it's gonna do really well. So I've heated up some butter to mix with the breadcrumbs for the top. You will want to make sure that you spray whatever pan you use. I'll be using our little disposable ones and I definitely will want to make sure I spray it because there's cheese in this so that will get sticky. I Assembling these are pretty easy, but let's get the butter in the breadcrumbs. You could add Parmesan cheese to this or garlic if you like that. Um, these breadcrumbs were old buns, not old. I mean, they were just not going to be used. And so I dried them out and put them in the food processor. So we try not to waste any food. It really helps your food budget if you use every everything you got. I mean, we used ham. All of the ham in here is ham that was in my freezer from a different uh, recipe. Some of it was given to me. Um, and so I just save it until we have a recipe, have enough for a recipe and put it together. So that cabbage was the last cabbage I bought, probably the middle of October to end of October at the farmer's market. Um, and I had just been saving it uh, in our garden refrigerator until I had a casserole worthy of it. Anyway, so that just adds a little bit. It'll brown as they're cooking and we'll just sprinkle it on top. So I'll get the pans ready and I'll bring you back. So I've put the labels, I put the name of it and then baking instructions. I remind them to take this lid off because this is cardboard to put it on a cookie sheet. Um, and then I tell them how long to bake it for. I've sprayed these pans and then I'm just filling them. 
making sure that I get a little bit of everything. So that it tastes good for them. And then I'm going to sprinkle the breadcrumbs. This is half of the, con well, not even half of the containers, but half of the people. Um, there's three that I give a little bit bigger to that are singles. My uncle, um, my mom, and my mom's cousin. Because they eat a little bit more. Um, they're younger and, and healthier than the rest of them. And um, then these are for the doubles. Oh, I'll tell you what, I was a little skeptical that that sauce was not gonna be enough, but boy, can I smell it. Um, I hope that you'll come and join me when I make the condensed soup because it is so convenient to have that in your cupboard instead of all of those cans of condensed soup. And you're really able to do a lot with it. And it's not as expensive. I will remind everyone, you. I wiped this counter before I started this step, but I wiped it before I started tonight too. So, um, because I have a tendency to get a little overzealous and food goes flying on the counter. Okay. I like to get them as full as I can, as long as I have enough, and I do. I have plenty of this tonight, which I would put this on a recipe I'd like to make again, uh, because it came together fairly quickly. It was somewhat, um, inexpensive and it made quite a bit when I have to pull out my big soup pot <laughs> I know I'm gonna have plenty and again you don't have to add the breadcrumbs um, or you can doctor them up a little bit. I think it would be really good with Parmesan cheese and a little garlic. Um, okay. So let me finish these and I'll let you know how many servings I got out of my three batches. 32 servings of our ham cabbage pasta bake. Awesome. More than we need, we'll be freezing over 10 servings, which is awesome to have in our freezer for the next month to eight weeks even. So I hope you'll try this recipe. It smells amazing. I certainly hope that you'll subscribe, come back and visit us again and comment. Tell me if you're gonna make this, if you'll make an extra one to freeze and as always, until next time, make sure you're preserving your food.